want to be. Two half-white children, two full brown children, one small house in LA, four jobs divided by two high school educated parents. The quality of life is high, though the means is low. The numbers vary from memory to memory, like three. Three times a week I clean my house and reach neighborhoods to make my way. Folding sheets is difficult. Every house has one rich white lady with two dozen sheets times four beds, which equals ten ways to fold the sheets so that they're perfect. Learning to fold sheets at least three to six ways means I can clean three to six houses a week, which equals rent, tortillas, and lettuce for the month, going into one. One night a week, I go-go dance in a cage in a Hollywood nightclub. Ten dollars an hour, plus tips. I'm only 18 back then, and already I know the equation for lust. One bare ass and face gets a 20, one crotch drop burns a 50. One tongue licking cage bars while slowly gyrating hips equals I am the first in my family to go to college. Then there's five. Five times a day, I prayed through my seven-year-old body that my father would lose his Spanish accent. I was convinced that if he did, he'd get a better job and we wouldn't be poor anymore. I was convinced he just wasn't trying hard enough to say signals instead of singles or video instead of video. Five times a day I sent my other prayers, my secret prayers, that I was thankful for looking the most white in a family of coffee-colored children. How I prayed that my brown blood wouldn't seep through my white skin so that I could learn English, get an education, make my parents proud of half-white, half-brown accomplishments. Five times a day times seven days a week plus two small hands clenched together in fear and ignorance equals a lifetime of trying to make halves a whole. You see, it is all in the numbers. These numbers that haunt my dreams make my past into single digits, which have no common denominator, just once. I'd like to write an equation for all the things I can never write about. For the three times my father took off work from three different jobs to see me in the school play. For the first and last time my sister told her abusive ex-husband that she didn't need him anymore and meant it. For the hundreds of times I saw my parents laugh until the tears rolled down their cheeks, even in a neighborhood of drugs and gangs, for that one moment. I did see my father cry when I, the first in my family, received my college degree. You see, I am writing a formula for all the numbers that have fallen on me. Fifteen sunrises in three different states have been impressed in one kiss, 185 poems in eight years. I am writing an equation using the universal language of numbers to describe 10,000 ways that something can mean everything. It's just all in how you do the math. What? <laughs> Just a moment, and you want to make it last as long as possible. 
So you keep going, and maybe now you're thrusting your good hand deeper and deeper while your other hand gently holds her throat or cups around her head like a baby bird. You hear the sound she makes, feel her nails dig into your arms and back, and her body is in flight and you move together. Then it starts to happen. The good hand takes the form of a fist, and though it pushes into her, it doesn't fight its way in. And the pushing is a punching faster and faster, and once again, you can't help but think where your fist has been. How many protests it's cut through the air, how many times it's defended the country of her body against those who would hurt it. How it's punched walls and doors and windows and could never find a way out of its own pain or into its own sanity is somehow, right now, completely holding this woman up. And if it moves a certain way, it has the ability to ruin her or set her free. This is no dick, no cock. It takes time to enter. You have to forget yourself so that you can practice the lost art of listening, not to her breath, but to her want. Patience is not a virtue here, it is a requirement. And there is a strong chance you might not make it all the way in sometimes, but a sure chance that you are forever changed when you come out. And her mouth, that mouth that is usually so full of words, only manages to let one of them out. And when her sounds have turned to high-pitched moans, then screaming, then crying, then more screaming, and the length of her has become one wide open geometry, then, then you really give her what she wants, what she's asked for. You go inside. And to say that she comes doesn't quite cut it because really both of you arrive together. And your hands, these tiny wonders that you criticize for being too small or too rough or not fast enough to keep you fed or housed turn out to be everything that one woman needed right then. And you exit the same way you went in but never the same and you let her breathe it all in while you lay on top of her and kiss her and fall under her hair and you let her feel it all and you hold it. That space, that moment now gone, it leaves you but it lives somewhere else now. 